Perfect. Emily and Vic, it's all yours. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for having us today. I'm really excited to talk to the community and get your feedback and hear from you because, you know, as, as Dan said, RSI is a, a community organization. Um, can you all see my screen? Great. So RSI. RSI is developing tools, processes, and hardware to support community-driven research in open source ecosystems. It was started by Dan Travis, who's here today. First gosh call, very exciting. And Greg Ostick, who I'm sure you've seen around on the forums or just ran into him. He's, he's always popping up in open source spaces and was a, a huge part of, of gosh as well. Um, I believe it was started in 2017, although Dan can check me if that's wrong. Um, and is was located headquartered in Ann Arbor, but we have a global team. Like I said, I'm calling in today from East Tennessee in the US and, and we have team members all over the place. Um, our side pushes to be accessible and welcoming to everyone, producing high quality, comparable data, building robust communities of practice and creating a culture of sharing. That's sort of the core that the tools and processes and hardware and systems that we work with are designed around. Um, for example, my main project is supporting the Bionutrient Institute, which focuses on connecting with farmers to document their growing practices, sample crops, and measure crop nutrition. Um, so day to day, I do a lot of troubleshooting with surveys and data collection um, and talking with farmers all over the US and with our partner labs in France and um, just working on supporting their tools and goals within you know, the ecosystem of, of processes that we've created. Um, of our tools, I think today we're mostly going to be talking about SurveyStack, which is our like survey making platform. Um, we also have some project management tools that I mentioned, and a lot of it is just designed to support communities who want to answer a question, helping them through the whole process. We also have um, a reflectometer, which is a, a spectrometer that um, I'm not as much of an expert in, but we will talk a little bit about that, especially in how it connects to survey making um, with SurveyStack. And here are some of the partners that we work with. I work with PharmaOS sometimes with Open Team, um, supporting NOFA Mass. I know Emily's worked a lot with the Million Acre Challenge. And these are just some of the groups that we've made custom processes for answering the questions that they have um, in ways that are sort of following those guidelines of accessibility, high quality data, um, shareable, open source, and collaborative. Um, we are currently in the process of reworking our survey stack website. Right now it's very basic and functional and we're working to make it a little more user friendly. And in doing that, we've been talking a lot about our processes and um, We've, we've kind of dialed into these five key areas that SurveyStack and our the OurSci tools are working on. And it's these five, create, collect, manage, process, and use. Um, and just thinking about how we can be flexible and scalable in all of these fronts um, is, is driving kind of the work that we're doing at OurSci. For instance, um, in my work with the Bionutrient Institute project, our side designed a series of surveys to collect management information at various points in the growing season, then designed shipping processes to get soil and crop samples to the BI lab, we built a series of dashboards to track and quality check those surveys and samples as they came in, built surveys for the lab to use while they were processing those samples, and then released a data explorer tool so users or anyone in the community could understand their results. And um, I'll link to that data explorer later in the chat because I'm really excited about it. I use it all the time. <laughs> um, SurveyStack itself is a cross-platform app for flexible data collection. Um, it was designed with scientific applications in mind, but also with multifunctionality and the ability to sort of grow beyond the initial conception of what it can do. Um, and I'm going to hand it over to Emily to talk a little bit more about SurveyStack and what it is and what it does. And um, Emily, just let me know when you want me to move on to the next slide. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Vic. Um, yeah, go ahead and move to the next one. 
So as Vic mentioned, we work with um, the Bionutrient Institute. So a lot of our application is kind of designed around working with farms. Um, we have integration with FarmOS, which is an open source farm management system. Um, and one of the unique things about SurveyStack is that we wanna be able to pull from different stakeholders, different platforms and different sources. So um, we can connect to hardware, we can pull from API data, and then we also obviously have the, the human input in any normal um, uh, data form. Um, and, and again, we just, the goal is to have comparability, flexibility, um, and quality in our surveys. Go ahead and move to the next, please. So some of the unique things about SurveyStack um, are we have flexible logic. So you can write in uh, logic using JavaScript um, to build forms so the users only see questions that apply to them. Uh, and then we also have just generally scripts that you can write in JavaScript um, to do pretty much anything. We've used them for lab calculations or to um, like pull in weather data for a specific area. Um, and then along with that, we have flexible API. So you can pull data to and from wherever you need it to go. As I mentioned, we use that often for farm OS, but you could really do that with any, um, any program you wanted to. Um, and then the, the last thing is the question set library. So if you go to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, the question set library, we created this um, because we have a lot of groups that are asking similar questions, but sometimes they either don't know that other groups are asking those questions or maybe they're asking them in just like a little bit different of a way. So we wanted to create the question set library for data comparability, but both between surveys in a group and between groups. Um, Greg often says we want to enter data once and use it many times. So that was kind of the motivation behind the question set library. Um, and basically what it is, is anyone can make a question set in the same way that you would make another survey. You can publish it to the library. And when you do that, it'll ask for a description of the question set, uh, who the maintainers are, the version, that type of thing. And then anyone can pull that question set into their own survey um, and use that. And it also aggregates um, all of the data from the different surveys. So it's cool if you're, if you're doing something and you wanna look at a bunch of different groups data at once. Um, right now we're using the question set for methodologies in our digital coffee shop, which is a, a benchmarking tool for farmers. And um, we're also just kind of encouraging groups to add question sets there and uh, building it out. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the second thing that I wanted to highlight that is maybe most relevant to GOSH is the hardware connection. So in SurveyStack, we have the ability to connect to devices. Um, basically, we have a script that connects to an external application called SurveyStack Kit that can access Bluetooth um, on a device. So I think the goal in the future is to use Wi-Fi connection, but right now we use Bluetooth. Um, so you could do that to connect to, to any type of device. We do have some question sets that are already written for things like um, our reflectometer. If you go to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit more about that. So here are two of the devices that we use um, for hardware connection right now um, in the Bionutrient Institute lab that we run. Um, the first is a reflectometer, which Vic already briefly mentioned, but um, I'll just kind of go over a little bit again. It is a handheld tool, it has 10 LEDs, and basically it measures the reflectance of a sample. So um, right now we're using that to uh, try and measure soil carbon as well as um, other applications like the amount of chlorophyll or nutrient density and different types of food samples. So we um, run the samples on this and then we also measure, measure them in the lab and uh, try and create models to make predictions. And then the second tool that we're using in the lab right now is the soil respiration meter. Um, that is basically a motor, a CO2 uh, sensor, and then uh, that little slide for the syringes that have the soil samples in them. Um, so those are, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention about the reflectometer is we are manufacturing those in Ann Arbor and we're actually looking for someone who is interested in, in helping with that. So if you know anyone that's in the area, um, and, and has some skills, uh, make sure to reach out to us after. Um, okay, next slide. I think that is it for the presentation. Um, 
I think we wanted to use the rest of the time that we might have to answer any questions and kind of go in whatever direction is most relevant to, to the people on this call. So um, our contacts are down there and we're happy to answer any questions you have now.